<laughs> Fine. Thank you, Kevin's. But it's so goofy. I meant to give this to you sooner, but... Mushrooms are your favorite, aren't they, Big Brother? But... Well, this one kind of got dried out. Brother? It was icky, wasn't it? I'm oh, sorry. No, no. <coughs> Not at all. Mm -hmm. Delicious. Very, uh... <coughs> Very... <coughs> yummy. Brother, you okay? Give me a hug, Petuni. Hey, quit it, Peonio. Come on. Don't get all mushy. Everyone's staring. Oh, it's just... A really sweet jester, that's all. Aw, there's nothing. 90 pe punies have joined your party. Now there are 101. Follow me, my soldiers! Follow! Put that in there. To be it for them. Let's go. my Joy-Con right now. I don't know what. So this way, right? Yep. Everyone, it's the Javis. It's a hunter Javis squadron. Uh, charge! Come on, Mario. There we go. Let's destroy the chair behind Fortress. Everyone back up and running. Let's freaking go.
Okay. I have the timing for that mostly, just not a hundred percent though. Oh wait, 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 wait. Okay, I need to do that after I get the boots. Because the only, uh, that panel on the floor, the wooden panel on the floor, I need to destroy it with the super boots, with the spin jump. I have an idea for this. This is that fake one. Uh, uh, what? What just happened? <laughs> Man, you guys are dense. Brilliant little trap, huh? And boy, did you bite on it. I saw you sticking that silly stone on the pedestal, so I made a fake one. Awesome. I mean, I knew it was great, but seeing you fall for it really gives me a warm, fuzzy feeling. <laughs> Talking about complete idiots, you guys are so dumb it hurts. Anyway, with you fools out of the picture, I can take my time hunting the crystal star. <laughs> Alright, what do we do? Uh, we have to find a way out of here. But what can we do? Boy, this just isn't right. Let's do something before my claustrophobia sets in. Rhea, think of something. No counting on you. Wait, you see those? I'm pretty sure we've seen columns like these before. It's sun, moon, puny, star. That's what I'm looking at right now. Whoa, 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 no. What was it, an earthquake? Eh, it was worth the shot to check the bushes right there, just in case. Okay. There we go.
Yeah! Super boots! Hey uh, there! I'm Toadette! <laughs> I'm getting up super boots. You'll be able to use the new jump technique now. So let's practice it, okay? If you press A at the right moment when jumping, you'll do a spin jump. The trick is to press A right after you jump. Oh, that was perfect! You're natural. Are you clear on the controls? Yeah. Looks like you've mastered the spin jump. You can smash the spots like this with your spin jump. Oh, one more thing. You can use the spin jump in battle too. Your attack power for jumps has been boosted as well, so enjoy that the next time you're in battle. See you again. Good luck in your adventure. Damn. I'll take that. How many shine sprites? I have seven. I can upgrade. Next time I'm in a port, I can upgrade two of my companions right off the bat. Oh. Damage Mario will cause on his next attack. Okay. Where does this go down to? I can't remember sometimes. Into the very pits of hell itself. <laughs> huh? You said where does it go down? It's like into the very pits of hell itself. <laughs> oh, I didn't hear you because I had my headphones oh, on. That's I figured you were gonna say. Who? Hmm. Well, that looks a bit and very weird looking forest from the back of. You've seen this spot before. The punies? Yeah, I don't know what they're based on. <laughs> I don't know either. Uh, they're trying to, like, they're focused on the orb that's in the pedestal. Here's what gets me. They're locked in a cage, and you just got into that cage by turning sideways. Why would they do that too? Right? Yeah, sometimes logic doesn't make sense with these, but... The story is still good. Yeah, my hair is messed up again. It's what? I, like, I just noticed my shadow and I saw my hair was all hefted up. And I'm like, oh crap, that hit. Yeah, I was about to say. People make fun of my hair. I bet you they're going to make fun of my hair. Doubt it. Oh my god, it's Ursula. <laughs> All right, This guy real quick.
Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Cheeseburger Mac. I mean, that's just my feeling, but I'm fine with whatever. So if you want to make the the stroganoff, then go ahead. Like I said, I'm fine with that whichever one. So. What did I say in Modern Warfare? We'll get him next time. We'll get him next time. Stay frosty, we'll get him next time. <laughs> that should have been a freaking quote they put on uh, Price's box, you know what I mean? I know. Oh, yeah. Uh, he got a YouTube. Yeah. Of Captain Price. And it said quotes that I didn't even know Price that said. I'm surprised they didn't put, what kind of name is soap anyways? Or... Uh, stay frosty. Instead, they put down, uh... I can't remember the quote. Uh, I know one of them was like, uh, just another day in the office. Yeah. You're gonna grab it, aren't you? Truth? truth? They say truth is the first casualty of war. I'm like, I think this is like a uh, Modern Warfare 2019 version of him, though. Because I think that's why he says that. I don't remember him saying stuff like that in the original yeah. uh, Modern Warfare trilogy. If, if I had to choose one quote from not the original Modern Warfare game, but if I had to choose one quote to put on that box that Captain Press says... From Cold War Zombies. I'm man in the match, me. What? What? He says, I'm man in the match, me. Okay, without the accent. I'm man of the match, me. Meat? Me. Me? Yeah. Because it's... I Usually, I hear that quote whenever I'm getting constant melee kills. Okay. <laughs> anyway, I'm at a loss. I don't know <laughs> Or better yet, what about uh, what he says about Deadshot? Yeah, I'm still streaming yet. I'm about to use the bathroom. But yeah, what about what he says about Deadshot Daiquiri? I forgot about that. Uh, in case you're wondering, he is uh, taking a small break. So. <laughs> you're ready for five minutes of game cooking. This is, we went from being Yeah, what he says about Deadshot Daiquiri, it's, uh... Like Which, by the way, Deadshot not many people like Deadshot Daiquiri. Why? 
Mostly, mostly because it automatically uh, aims towards the critical. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. well, I wouldn't say it aims towards critical. It immediately aims towards the head, and it seems kind of pointless to do. But Captain Price says, "Deadshot, Darkery, who the bloody hell needs that?" And he's right. <laughs> Yeah, but then again, whenever I'm playing Forsaken or something like that, I usually have all ten perks. That's including Deadshot. Because I want to make sure I survive. You, you poor fool. I said I have all ten perks. Still. I mean, I do like the concept of upgrading perks. Yep. But the only thing I don't like in the zombies is the constant radio chatter. Kind of breaks up the gameplay. What do you mean, radio chatter? From all the. Uh, oh, from like Gray, Weaver, and all of them? Yeah. Uh, and plus, also, I mean, I do like uh, them giving us the objectives. Like you would do in campaign. Yeah. But also, you gotta realize that doing that kind of takes the fun out of trying to complete an Easter egg by trying to look around and everything. Mm hmm. But, I mean, to each their own on that one. Yeah. Some people like it, some people don't. I'm one of the people who do because I suck at finding Easter eggs. That is true. But also, I learned that most Easter eggs and zombies you would need for people to do. Like Shadows of Evil, for instance. Shadows, Shadows of Evil and Origins. Yeah. I don't know about Origins. I think you can complete that with at least one person. Don't you need uh, the four staffs? Oh. Oh, man. Yeah. I thought you needed just at least one. Just a fire staff. Fire staff. Because if there's something with a fire staff. Potential. Uh, I can't remember. I haven't really most, thought. Most Black Ops 3 zombies, uh, you really don't need multiple people. Just Only Shadows of Evil, sure. Yeah. Uh, the, dumb, the dumbest Easter egg of all time? Gerard Crowley, you don't need it, but it's really hard doing it by yourself. Because you have to do challenges. And one of them is uh, uh, you have to disable bombs in certain areas. And you have to run to get to those areas. And if you do it by yourself, it's even harder. And you know what's the dumbest Easter egg we both know? What? The round 150. Oh, from Classified on Black Ops? Yeah, that was kind of bullshit. Yeah. Dude, that was, there was no, that, okay, let me just say right now, most Black Ops 4 zombie maps, uh, there are some that are not as bad because they're just rehashes. Yeah. Uh, like the, the Victus crew rehashes. But yeah. most of the, like, Chaos maps and, like, Alpha Omega, Blood of the Dead, Scary Easter eggs were like, I think someone was fucking like meth or something when they came up with those Easter eggs. Yeah. But that was ridiculous. Now, if I had to say. Most of them are rinse and repeat fetch best, quests, especially Alpha Omega. Now, if I had to say one specific map where they should have fixed the Easter egg entirely, transit. Instead of all four people having the freaking EMPs, they should just have it to where at least just the one person and have it a wall by thing. Yeah. Also, uh, I, I get the idea of seeing the being able to hear Rick open because he, you know, made zombies and meat. So he has a connection to the Aether. But in order to complete. Transit, you have to play as Stuinger because you have because you have to hear uh, Rick talk and say something when you do so a certain thing like yeah. the jet, using the jet gun and stuff like that. Yep. And if you don't have Stuinger and you're by yourself, it won't work because you won't know if you got it. Now Stuinger is the one that's the nerdy yeah. sound, right? I call him the conspiracy theorist because that's pretty much who he is. <laughs> but he's the one that sounds nerdy, right? No, 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 no. That's Martin. Uh, Marston. Or, or, the, no, the, the nerdy one is that skinny guy with glasses who has the uh, uh, the calculator watch. Mm. 
when we know who Russman and, and uh, uh, who, who, yeah, we know who Russman is and uh, Misty. Misty, thank you. We just can't remember uh, which one's like Stu oh, I, know who, I know who this is who. Stu Linder is the older one that is batshit crazy conspiracy theorist guy and talks to himself most of the time. And then, uh... Is he... Oh, so he, he's, like, say, for instance, when you finish uh, making the turbine at the very beginning, he's the one that goes, I know what this is for. Uh, what is this for? Yeah. Okay. Now I know exactly who it is. He's the, he's the one that looks like freaking, uh, John A. Romero. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, I'm not kidding. Yeah, if there wasn't a zombie apocalypse, he would have been like a conspiracy theorist. He'd be like, aliens are real! Oh, Here's you on ancient aliens. Aliens. Zombies. All that type of thing. Yep. But, uh. Who else? Um. Who else? Yeah, well, uh, I didn't mind the chaos uh, storyline. In Black Ops 4, because that was some unique maps. Though I have to say, Voyage of Despair, it was a great concept on paper, but when they actually uh, applied the actual blueprints of the Titanic to the map, it made it hard to remember where to go. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Plus, also, there were certain areas that were already uh, closed off because of water. I mean, you can swim through and stuff like that. It's just that you have to like, like turn off certain valves to unlock them and stuff like that. And you can't remember which one. Oh so uh, nice. yeah. That was one of the things I did. Uh, 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 nine was good because it was basically an arena, like a Roman Colosseum arena. But you have to face different deities of different, uh, like. Ancient civilizations. That 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 was a good one. What's up? If they went to World War, did a World War One Call of Duty game. Oh, they did like World at War and then World War Two, but no uh, World War One though. I mean, Battlefield did World, World War One, but Call of Duty has yet to touch that. I feel like that'd be a good idea. That would be a good idea. I'm surprised they did. Because uh, see, Battlefield One, even though it had like it was World War One, so you would think, oh, it's just going to be bolt action rifles and just man machine guns. That's it. And they were like, no, nah, we'll, we'll, we'll put in some concepts of, uh, of certain guns that didn't have a chance to shine in World War One, But we give it a shot. If, if, since Call of Duty likes to be anachronistic at the damn time, yeah. that would be perfect for them if they can just pull the same thing. Like, we can bring in some guns that didn't have a chance to shine in World War One. Mm -hmm. Plus, also, Call of Duty is pretty good at storyline. I'm not gonna lie to that. Plus, also, just think, World War One zombies. They'd be like origins but without the mystic part, right? Yeah. Plus, also, none of the anachronistic guns. 
this time, right? Oh, uh, dude, if they brought back the spring kill for zombies, and they bring back all the stats they had from World of War, it's gonna be the worst gun. You know why? World of War uh, Springfield rifle in zombies suck because the iron sights were off. That's why I don't like iron sights. No, that was the only one that didn't that had a problem with that. All the others were fine. But I feel like they always undermine the power of the Colt 1911. That's a pretty, pretty uh, powerful gun. But they make it as the starter pistol so in zombies and they make it shit. Looks like something I made in fourth grade. Hmm? The little robot, the what's, what, what's the character thing? Crump? Huh? Crump? Crump? Yeah. That looks like something I would have made in the four, in fourth grade uh, science fair project. Yeah, it does. Actually, I take that back. It was not a science fair project, it was a science class project. <laughs> Literally, I remember that very well. Fourth grade, we had a uh, project for science, and we were supposed to make a robot, uh, and then yeah, we have to explain how we made it with the objects, and explain what the objects we used to make the robot, what they, oh, what we uh, said that's what they represent, and stuff like that. I made my, ro I made my robot day of. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> While people were in presenting it, I'm in the back just scrambling around making robots, and is making a robot part out of a shoebox that I grabbed at home. <laughs> I used uh, uh, an, an empty uh, uh, paper towel roll and uh, a pair of binoculars. And uh, and you know the little claw thing we have? You know, the, the extended claw yeah. thing? I had two of those. I taped it all up and I pretty much made the same freaking rover, uh, Mars rover. <laughs> You well, made the at the during the presentation, and what's interesting, I pointed it out, and I even said what it is, and said what's all the component, the components, and stuff like that. I got an A plus. Because <laughs> <laughs> see, the whole time I couldn't figure out what to make, because I could not find anything to base off of. And then when the presentation is wrapping, and I see them, I'm like, oh, <laughs> I get it now. Once I figured it out, boom, 10 minutes later. <laughs> <laughs> and what's interesting is my fourth grade teacher, Miss Seidel, I saw her again one time, like, I think, like 10 years ago, and I explained that to her, and she goes, wow. <laughs> could you have, she goes, could you imagine what you would have made if you had, if you used, if you figured it out at the beginning of your project? <laughs> I was like, you would have not only made your hundred, but you probably would have been entered in, into like a science project, a science fair project or something like that. Yeah, that's true. A national science fair, uh, or something like that. I was like, yeah. Problem was, I didn't have any good. I'm, I'm a visualist. Okay. Yeah. Once I see it, then I'm like, okay, now I know. What to do.
Good. Oh, yeah, Mike, but here's something you probably didn't know of Mob the Dead. Huh? Here's something you probably didn't know of Mob the Dead. There's a glitch where you can uh, open up doors without having to spend money. Really? Yeah, you hold you hold a cooked grenade and die in front of a, a, a door. It'll open up the door automatically as long as you have afterlife. But it only works once per turn. Once? Oh. Like, oh, once per round? Of, once per round. Because, you know, afterlife. Because you can't... If I remember correctly, you, don't, you get... You can... We may, uh, uh, you get... Uh, One afterlife per round. Yeah. Bet you didn't know that. Did not know that, actually. And it's actually pretty good to use early on. So long as someone revives you, because you, if once you're in afterlife mode and you open the first door, you can access certain areas to with the afterlife because of that. Mm -hmm. yeah. It can be useful in the early. Jesus. Okay. Fire alarm. No. I hate that. Fuck. <sighs> and it's not even hot. It's just the steam. That's it. It's not this. Mm-hmm. There we go. It's like that episode of, of Friends. <laughs> but you have the fire alarm that just won't stop. The fire alarm that won't stop, yeah. Also, something else, like destroying something that won't ever stop. You know what comes to my mind? Oh, no. I don't what? No, don't. This is a figure of speech. Just say what you're going to say. No, you know it too. No, I do. Mm-hmm. What? Well, everybody knows about the bird. Oh. <laughs> oh get me started. <laughs> that, was one, that was one uh, gag in Family Guy that should have died almost immediately. But because of Jesus, and it just died when the when they did the freaking uh uh when they did their 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 version of that one scene in Office Space with Stewie and Brian when they destroyed the disc. Yeah, but it still kept showing up. I was like, God damn it, die already! Yeah. I'm like, I want to join them in that one, smash it up. Yeah, and then because Jesus was there, it came back. Allow me to enter. What is it? What's it? Stone. What? I've been taken by Mark. Perhaps his Mario character is not the fool I took him for. <sighs> Speak up, Exonaut. What is the status of the other crystal stars? Yes, Still searching for the other crystal stars. Unsuccessful, Stern. 
We knew there were crystal stars in Hooktail Hook Castle and Boggy Woods, yet Mario claimed them first. The one we seized came from the one we seized came from Warport. That means there are four crystal stars left out there. And we will have them. Keep looking. Do not Mario beat us to the punch. There's no reason to doubt that Mario has that. We must listen up. We need to keep a close watch on what Mario does from now on. Absolutely, sir. Hey Richard. What? Do you have a second you want to see something? She has the ponytail now. Of course, you have to turn her around so you can... <laughs> oh, she's paper, so... Uh, and when she walks out, she's back to her regular long hair. So it's Playboy, but... You know. See? I just exploited how he is, like, needs a girlfriend. I hate you sometimes. Feelings mutual, buddy. Feelings mutual. <laughs> you say some things that make me want to question our relationship as buddies. <laughs> buddy, like friends slash brothers. Pretty much. <laughs> yeah, I remember when you said that one thing about my sister? That's what you ticked me off. <laughs> Didn't you but, really, but, forgave me? Then you immediately forgave. And stuff like that and said it wasn't serious, so... Yeah, because you know I always joke about uh, harsh shit. Oh, hey, Val, if you're ever watching because and you hear this, next time you see him, punch him. <laughs> <laughs> you don't even know, you need to know what he said. It's just that if he said something about you that pissed me off, it was bad, so you can punch him. <laughs> Hell, let Ryan punch him first, and then you punch him. Because I know Ryan would want to kick his ass first. <laughs> I highly doubt they're watching it. Oh, I told them about, you know, us streaming. Who? Valerie, Ryan. Oh. And you. No, Mom too. Yeah, but you really think they're going to be awake at this hour? No. Well, maybe my mom, but... What? Well, my, my mom doesn't work anymore. Oh, yeah, that's right. So she talked? In fact, she talked to me a couple times, like, late at night. Like, a few weeks ago. Hmm. Yeah, she had no schedule, uh, time schedule anymore. She only wakes up whenever Valerie says, hey, someone needs to watch the kids while I'm going to do something. Hmm. Or Ryan, whoever. Then again, I think it's Dan who's watching the kids. I don't I didn't really know. Should have asked. Maybe. But then again, why should I ask? Because I don't, because do I need to know who's watching the kids whenever Val and Ryan go do their things? That's like asking who's watching me when you're gone. <laughs> no. That's funny. Help me, Obi-Wan Kenobi. You're my only hope. <laughs> Wrong franchise. Peach. I am your sister. And... Why are... Oh, they're dancing. Why are they dancing?
dancing with my set L uh oh I'm dancing with my set L uh oh <laughs> sorry I'm going out <laughs> Not a, not a single missed beat. Good. Yeah, when it comes to rhythm games, I'm usually the professional on that one. He just goes with the flow. I think the music class with the bully kind of represents that. Huh? I think the music class with bully kind of represents that, right? Yeah. Okay. First three classes, easy. It's just the music four and five that were the difficult oh, ones. Ridiculous. And then after that, you have to deal with the freaking nutcracker plate. Yeah. But that one was, was easier, much easier than four and five band. In case people don't know what we're talking about, the game Bully Scholarship Edition, they added class, more classes in that one. And music was one of them. Instead of the five buttons, you just have two. The left trigger and right trigger. They're so off, you know what I mean? Yeah, when it comes to rhythm stuff like that, leave that to the professionals like Activision. Yeah. Yeah, and then it was that uh, very last one, I think, right? The Oh, that pissed me off. Yeah. Last and it, one, I did it like maybe seven or eight times, couldn't get it close. He does it once, and boom, he passes. 94%. And you, need the get, you need to get at 90 to pass. And he, the closest he would get is 87. Yeah. And he does it first try, 94, and I was like, if you weren't my friend, I'd kill you now. Ready to roll. We're ready to rock. Can these button okay. It's, it's freaking irritating. Like, whenever I'm sitting normally at the desk, uh, my buttons won't work. But when I turn slightly so the controller's closer to the switch dock, then it works. I don't understand this logic. Bro, I freaking lit. I, if I see something happening with Mario and Luigi at the Nintendo Direct this month, I'm gonna lose my shit. I'm sorry, what did you say? If I see something related to Mario and Luigi uh, at the Nintendo Direct this month, I'm gonna lose my shit. Dude, what if they do a remake of Bowser's Inside Story? Again? Again? Because they did the one. Uh, they did one for the 3DS. And what they made one for the Switch? Or better yet, what if they just do a like do you the, the Mario and Luigi collection? Like they have all five of the games in one package for the Switch. Do it. They brought back the. Remember the Super Mario for the DS? Like new Super Mario Brothers? Yeah. Bro. 
With the, the freaking giant mushroom, the mega mushroom, and also the versus most uh, mode. Yeah, what if they brought that back? If they were, if they plan to do that, their best bet is to do that for the Switch successor. Mm, yeah, true. Because there have been rumors where the Switch successor, the patent includes dual screen. Oh yeah, it's basically a Switch with two screens. Mm-hmm. <sighs> What's with them with two screens? I mean, I mean, the DS and 3DS were popular, so... That's because you were able to close it and put it away. And also, it kind of made sense. Minus the, two, the, minus second, the 2DS, though. Because the second screen was a touchscreen. Yep. Of course, uh, my touchscreen was ruined because of that. At least as far as I'm aware. Oh, boy. It could have been. But both me and Val played, uh, remember Guitar Hero on tour for the DS? Oh, Jesus Christ. We would play the hell out of and there were scratch marks on where you were supposed to strum the guitar. Yeah. There were scratch marks on the touchscreen, and that destroyed that they ruined the, the, the DS. What the hell? <laughs> scratch marks instead of using the stylus? Oh, we had the stylus, all right. It was the guitar pick stylus for that came with the on tour uh, uh, thing uh, that you plugged into where the the the. the Game Boy Advance port was that you plug that into there. Oh. When you hold it like this, you just go. I'm telling you right now, I think Valio was the only one that ever completed expert mode. <laughs> Jesus. But yeah. three stars at minimum. Three stars at minimum? I barely, wow. I barely completed. No, I didn't do expert mode at all. She did. 